Happy Thanksgiving Eve, everybody. I'm Scott Hill from Flight Club. I'm here once again hosting uh, hangouts with Flight Club, whatever we're going to call this. Uh, we're, we're here celebrating Wild Turkey Month for November of, of 2018. And before we introduce what we're uh, finishing the month of, 2000, of November 2018 with, let's, let's have the other two guys here introduce themselves. Hey, I'm Steve, and I'm happy to be here. And if you if you haven't seen our series yet that we're doing on Flight Club ICT.com, uh, the whole month of November we're doing uh, 30 reviews in 30 days, all of Wild Turkey products. We did this last year. We're doing it again this year. Different stuff than we did last year. So a grand total of 60 Wild Turkey uh, products that we're doing between last year and this year. Um, Check it out. It's not too late to jump in, see where we've been, see where we're going next. Um, coming up in the last nine uh, days of the a month here, and there's nine really good ones to come. Jamie? Jamie Ballman here. Um, I'm just ready to not get my intake of lead for the year, but let's do this. Jamie is going to be responsible for Wild Turkey Month 2019. He's already got a head start on us, so... Look forward in 2019, November 2019, to 30 more posts, of, a majority of which are already courtesy of, of Mr. Ballman. So th thank you in advance for that. Congratulations. All right. Hey, good good point, though, Jamie. Uh, we're, we're here talking about lead today. We are, we are going to review uh, a series of wild turkey decanters. They're here behind me in all their glory from 1975 to 1978. Uh, I picked these up here in the last couple of months on a, on a, on a bourbon secondary uh, marketplace. Uh, got a pretty decent deal on, on the four of them. Uh, was really looking for a 1978. We'll get to that uh, on our blog, I'm sure. Uh, but was really looking for a 78 and came across a series of these. So I thought, hey, why not? Let's, let's, let's try all these. Um, but the, the, one of the things that these 1970s decanters are, are a little bit infamous for is that there is a lead <laughs> risk uh, associated with either the glazing or the paint. Uh, Jamie, I think you know a little bit about the, the uh, straight bourbon uh, thread that talks a little bit about that. Do you, do you remember much about that thread? Yeah, nothing's ever really been confirmed. Nobody... I'm sure somebody's had it tested, but I don't know what the results were on that. Um, I do know somebody said the 70s were more dangerous than the 80s with the glazing that's on them. Uh, we're doing the 70s, so if uh, if my IQ drops a few points, I apologize to my employer. Yeah, we're not gonna know the difference. I promise. <laughs> Um, but from what I've heard, uh, I think there is definitely a risk of, of lead, uh, lead contaminants in the glazing and the paint. And, and the real risk is not that we're having, you know, one pour of each, or at least that doesn't seem to be what people are fearful of. It's the uh, repetitive nature of it. Yeah. Uh, I get lead has like a half life in your body of like six months. So. You know, we drink these, and if in three months later we come back to it and, and have more, we might as well drink them the next day. Um, so we're gonna, we've got some fairly light pours to go through here on, on four of them, just to make sure that we're uh, being a little cautious. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm game to give it a, give it a whirl. How about you guys? I'm game. Um, so before we get into this, and I won't spend much time here on background. 75 through 78, we know Wild Turkey or the Austin Nichols Company purchased the Boulevard uh, Distillery in 71. Um, it, it, it looks like they were sourcing from multiple sources prior to 71, Boulevard being one of their primary sources. Uh, most people sus suspect that after they bought the Boulevard facility that a lot of the non-Boulevard source uh, whiskey was sold off or used quickly. And so the, the, the point of all this is, although these are eight year 101 H stated bourbons from 75 to 78, which would all predate the purchase of the Boulevard distillery, very likely they were produced at the Boulevard distillery, which is the distillery that produces essentially all the way through current day there, you know, you get the 2011, 12, uh, kind of, 
remodel or uh, renovation of the facility, but but primarily we're talking about the same facility that we have now. Uh, but we may we may pick up on something different. It, there's there's a possibility that one of these may not be from the same distillery. So that's about all I know about these old uh, 101 decanters. Any, any you guys know anything else? You want to share anything else? I just want to. I don't know how um, clearly it came across. Just so um, we know what we're dealing with. Four decanters behind you are each wild turkey bourbon 101 proof. One from 1975, one from 1976, one from 1977, and one from 1978. And what you were discussing about where the whiskey within the decanters comes from, why that's relevant is because what was the year that Wild Turkey Distillery actually opened? That was, that was 71 when they purchased the Boulevard Distillery. Uh, Austin Nichols purchased that, and then they moved into it, and it became the Austin Nichols Distillery. So 71. And and each of these decanters contains bourbon that's at least eight years old? That's correct. Yeah. So that's, uh, I think, very interesting to, to taste some stuff that um, was distilled and even began aging before a distillery was ever called a Wild Turkey. Uh, so I'm really interested to, to jump in and, and see what's going on uh, with these things. I've never experienced, uh, you know, one of these kinds of wild turkey products at all well I, I say let's let's get into it um I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna name my my seller's name online uh for obvious legal reasons uh but just say that our seller was kind enough to uh go ahead and decant these for us before they shipped these these are notorious for breaking the corks are are terrible in these uh they're ceramic the heads pop off and you lose a lot in shipment so we're going to start with a 1975, which was decanted into this nice Michter's bottle. Uh, there is some commonality, or uh, at least with the rise in Michter's. So interesting that we uh, have a Michter's bottle here for that. So we've got the. Let's start with the 75, gentlemen. I get a lot of leather right up front. A lot of leather. It's a really cool note. Cool. Some allspice. Jamie, Jamie, what was your what was your note? A cola, almost root beer like. Yeah, like IBC. There's a, a little bit of those kind of old butter, butterscotchy <laughs> notes. Um, a little more in the. Kind of maple syrup sweetness uh, for me. Yeah. Like true maple syrup. Right. There's some, there's a little bit of plum in the background, like kind of plump, plump a plum. The color on these is crazy dark. Show everybody that bottle again. Yeah, this is this is dark. I think seventy five may be the darkest of, of all of them. You, it's hard to really pick up here, but this is this is clear juice, um, and it it filled most of a, a seven fifty on these. So there didn't appear to be much loss uh, over the years. I think it smells underproof too. I I wouldn't tag this as as one of one necessarily. I think it knows is a little bit closer to ninety. There's a, a note on here that I often call ink. Um, I'm not sure if it's not a, a, a wood note, but kind of comes across a little bit inky to me. That older turkey funk note. The longer this sits, I think the, the little bit more of that, uh, the, the dry oak and, and sawdust comes out but you know we've talked about this before that that turkey funk can can have multiple components to it kind of that wet wood earthy that can have some dry wood components to it too I think. <laughs> a 
I like. I mean, I think it's a nice, rich nose. Um, definitely, yeah, I, think ri- leather. I think rich. Rich is the right word. Yeah. Um, how, how do you guys want to handle this? Should we get all the way kind of through a seventy-five and and then go to seventy-six? Do you want to compare noses? It, it probably going to make more sense if we just uh, do one year and then the next. Yeah, probably so. Very oily. Very oily, but a little bit thin on flavor on the kind of the mid palate. There's not nearly as much richness as there is on the nose and finish as there is on the palate. I don't know if I said yeah. that one. The, the, yeah. The palate's a little thin. I, w- I was about to say it's almost like a little, it's a little bit watery. Um, through the palate, there is that little spike of of heat that comes at the end of the mid palate um that delivers some flavor but really from the palate and through the finish it it gets it gets through pretty quick um for as oily as it is almost like it just slides right through (coughs) there's not a lot left lingering i mean it's it's one of those things where it's 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 mouth coating but with nothing in particular on, on the palate, I get a little bit of cinnamon apple, but and then the finish it kind of transitions to like a, a, a like an applejack cereal. Um, there's so much of this this whole pour so far that's reminded me of breakfast. You got the, uh, the the maple syrup. I'm getting sort of that apple cinnamon uh, applejack cereal. It, it just feels very like I mean like almost like a bowl of oatmeal minus the oatmeal. I'm still getting that cola on the palate. Um, I think Netherton nailed the mouth feel on this one. It's definitely, um, it's full flavor, but then at the same time, it's kind of a interesting one. Very short on the finish. A little bit of maybe grape soda on the palate. There's an herbal note that pops out on the finish. Um, it's it's a little bit sharp. Um, I can't quite pinpoint it. Um, it almost feels like like time. Um, There's definitely a metallic note to it. Um, I wanted to try to name the metal, but metallic is all I can come up with on that one. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm feeling you on the metallic part. I'd say for me, if I'm trying to name it, I'm I'm probably I don't know. I was gonna say penny at first, but then it transitions a little bit away from that copper uh, to more of a kind of a tin flavor, um, it, and it lingers a little bit. Um, and I said herbal before. I think there's kind of this combination of herbal metallic and and drying uh notes sort of on the tail end of that finish i I get the herbal too but i can't um i don't know what the what the note is there on the like a a sage is that what you're getting it's 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 definitely kind of a savory herbal i don't know thyme sage or kind of combination of those herbs um it's not it's not offensive it's just not it's not quite what i expected i was expecting more notes it's not bad it's just really hard to name any anything in particular i i, I definitely agree and and Part of the problem may be, and, and Stephen alluded to this earlier, is we have nine days or whatever left. Uh, some of the big hitters, Jamie, you and I have tried lately, and Stephen, you've tried a few of these. We've tried some big hitters, cheesy gold foil, pewter top, donuts, split label. 
some of these really rich, old, dusty wild turkeys that just have layers of flavor that go on and on that are amazing five out of five type whiskeys. This doesn't get you there. This isn't a this isn't a five out of five kind of whiskey. Uh, for me, all the way through, it's probably it's, it's satisfying or more than satisfying, but it, it's not one that uh, is just just so incredible that I'm going to risk lead poisoning to go back to on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> uh, it's it's good. It's one of those glad you get to try it, but um, yeah, I can't see myself wanting to. To drink loads of this with the risk that it that it holds um three and a half four three and a half for me you you think the you think the palettes uh your the, the best part of it um yeah i maybe would even call the finish a three as short as it is so you're a three and a half four three yeah. steven where do you think you fall I'm four three three. I like the richness of the nose. I I feel like you uh, are able to get a little bit even of some uniqueness there to something that's older. Um, but both the palate and the finish, while uh, they have nice attributes to them, I, I don't feel like even the metallic note is necessarily too off putting. Um, I don't get that something extra. And I'm I'm trying to hold at bay the fact that this is from 1975 and and that it it needs to deliver that um, because of its uh, vintage. Um, but I don't know if I get off a three on the powder to finish for any particular reason. Yeah, it's going to make it a little bit of a challenging um, uh, write up on a review here to get these scores. I think I'm in agreement with Steven. I, I think that the nose is my favorite part of this. There's just a richness to the nose uh, that really excited me about this. And the, and the palate and the finish were a little bit of a letdown. Um, I'm probably in that four, three and a half, three and a half range, uh, maybe four, three and a half, three. Uh, so I think we're all close. I mean, I think there's a little disagreement of whether the palate or the finish is, is, is the better part of this. Um, but I, 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 Steven said it, there's nothing really off putting about this. It's just, I think we expected a little bit more. Uh, shall we move on to 76? Uh, we need to give an overall score. We need to give an overall score here to 75. Yeah. I mean, I'm at an overall with three and a half. I feel a little bit more than satisfied, but not quite up to a four. Um, and so that's where I'm at. Jamie. I'm in agreement. It's three and a half. Um, and not not much more to say. It's it, I'm satisfied, more than satisfied, but it's not much more than that. Yeah, I I, I definitely agree. Um, you, know, you get to a four, and three seems just to be a little bit too uh, too low. I think it's right at three and a half. Um, from a value perspective. I picked up each of these uh, for about one fifty. Uh, actually, um, change that uh, about one twenty five is what I picked up these for. Um, so what would you give this at one hundred twenty five dollars for nineteen seventy five uh, wild turkey? Uh, ignore the lead for a moment. Very, that's very difficult to assess. Um, because should the value take into account its vintage, should it take into account the, the decanter itself, um, any kind of personal meaning it, it has to you, if I'm valuing it not on the fact that it's from 1975 and not on the fact that it came in, a, in an ornate decanter, just simply based on the tasting experience alone, at that value, I'm at a two and a half. I, I think you're probably I think you're probably right uh, with your disclaimers on that. And I said ignore the lead issue for a moment, and it's probably not worth ignoring. Um, it, that does have to factor into this somehow, and I think the secondary markets factor that in. If you were going to buy these same bottles that were not in a decanter, you would pay a two to three x that price. So it does factor in. Um, it probably gives me a little bit more caution on buying these. Um, so I, I, I'm probably in that two and a half range on value on this as well. Jamie? I, uh, 
I agree. I, I think that because you bought all four of them, you definitely got them a little cheaper. They typically sell for 180 to 200, I want to say, um, which puts that value even lower. But the lead thing is just something that regardless of ignoring it, you just can't. And um, it's something that I think every, every Turkey fan wants to try it. And I think you should, you should try them. Um, just be cautious and don't drink a ton of it. But, that being said, two and a half. I'm, I think that we're all in agreement on that. Uh, try it, but don't drink a ton of it. As I get ready to put my glass down here and reach for the 76, and we've mentioned this uh, many times in the past, sometimes the best nose of these comes from a, an empty glass or nearly empty glass. The amount of fruit that I'm picking up on this nearly empty glass is, is pretty impressive on that 75. That's funny you say that. I come back to it, and the first thing I said when I initially knows it was leather, and that's I'm still in the same spot. <laughs> I get a lot of leather. No doubt. No doubt that that's there. All right, 76. Let's move on to the 1976. Uh, this time in a Jack Daniels uh, single barrel barrel proof, a darn fine whiskey in itself. Uh, but that's not what's in this. This is 1976 Wild Turkey. Uh, I think I think this is the I think this is the 76 eight year 101 proof four fifths of a quart. This one leads in with what I expected the first one to most predominantly, and that is butterscotch right off the bat. A rich butterscotch. Um, is wrapped in that mature oak. There's a little salt that. to that nose. I mean, I, we talk about salted caramel. I don't know if salted butterscotch is a thing, but there's a little bit of that salt to it as well. I think that salt is what um, I'm smelling and calling like a rusty metal um, that came through on the palate on the last one. Those leather notes are still there. Uh, this one, I think, has a little bit more defined earthiness to it, uh, more of the kind of the uh, dirty uh, potting soil kind of notes. More of those rye notes. A little bit of citrus on this nose. It's another delightful nose. I get a little more of that maple syrup um, and, and a little bit of like uh, kind of like French toast kind of kind of notes to this. There's a little Give it a little swirl. There's a little bit of a um, overripe slash rotting plum maybe to it. You get a little of that anise on this. There's again some herbal flavors to this that I'm not quite pinpointing. I don't know if it's anise. It's not the same. It's not that same time sage note we were talking about on the last one. Mm -mm. This one has a. It, I feel it has a little bit more. Um, a little bit more ethanol to the nose. Not not in a burning way, but just a comes out of the glass kind of way. It has it more of an undoubtedly turkey nose to it. Now this packs more flavor than that 75. I mean, it leaps out with those black grapes and cocoa i get right up front we we gotta we gotta pause the video for a moment we th this is huge 
you just moved on from green grapes to black grapes. I'm 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 impressed. I'm proud. I get purple grapes on the finish, though. <laughs> There's this uh, for, for the for the rest of the world out there, the two or three viewers who may may watch this. Uh, there's a debate of whether there's such thing as purple grapes. Uh, I disagree. I don't think there is such thing, but Steven's convinced that there's purple grapes out there. You may not read something that says purple grapes. You will look at grapes and see them as the color purple and know <laughs> that when you're describing them as such, people will understand better. <laughs> I think we can all agree that they're not red. You got a point. The color is not red and black. The color is all purple and different hints of it. But thank you. That's not what the bag says. All right. This this could not be more different on the palate than the last. Yeah. One. We talked about that watered down feeling on that last one. Yeah. You this know what this great. reminds me of on the palate a lot on the palate, like a single barrel pick of Eagle Rare. You think it's that sweet? Yeah, I do. It's that sweetness mixed with that oak and cocoa and grape. That's the color of purple. I get more of that maple syrup. Maybe that's the sweetness. Um, I, I get, again, that uh, French toast that I got on the nose, I really get really strong on the, on the palate. I get like a plum skin. Um, I got tobacco, leather, uh, butterscotch, that maple syrup, butterscotch, kind of hard mm -hmm. to, that line is a little. Yeah, there is way, a very rich tobacco note in that. Way more mouthfeel to this one than the last one. This also has a very you know, sometimes there's a, a fine line of distinction between the palate and the finish. This one seems to be a very cohesive uh, progression where I pick up on each of the things that we're talking about and that I'm getting on the palate, I'm getting again on the finish too. So it, it, it becomes harder to see where one ends and the other begins, but because of that cohesion, it, it it feels very nice. You get a little drying feeling on the on the finish, and if so, yeah. what is it? Well, I thought it was cocoa is what I got on the palate. Um, was that drying uh, kind of sensation? Um, but it's also I, I feel like I get more oak with this one. If I had to guess, I would say that this tastes older than the seventy five does. I would, I would too. Um, from a, it's no, not an eight year. It's, it's probably this may be more of a twelve year versus an eight or nine or ten year in the in the seventy five. But I also, this also feels older in era uh, than that as well with all those with all those butterscotch notes. This one is really nice. Um, it. Um I, 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 do we want to score it? It's go for it. Mancy to do it. I think the nose maybe is a four and a half on this one. Um, and the like he said, the the palette and the finish are almost all one. You almost want to call it one in your review. It's so smooth all the way through it. Um, I think I'd call this a four and a half on both of them. I still think the finish is its weakest element. Uh, one, because it doesn't introduce anything new. Two, because it's slightly drying. And three, although we haven't really commented on that metallic note, uh, because it's not nearly as prevalent as it was on the 75, oh, there's a little bit of that metallic note on the tail end. And I don't, I, I think in the end, uh, I, I probably don't get higher than about a three and a half on the finish on this. But I don't know that I disagree much on the on the nose and palate. 
I'm in that four, four and a half range on probably both the nose and the palate. I'm a four across the board uh, on this one for me. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, an exceptionally easy drinking uh, a bourbon at 101 proof. And, um, you know, it has not the most complex uh, nose and palate. And, you know, the finish too. Um, but the identifiable uh, scents and flavors I get throughout uh, are all good. I like them all. Uh, they blend well together. Uh, it doesn't seem imbalanced. Um, so I'm a four across the board. Um, so Steven on an overall score, I'm guessing that puts you at a four. Yes. Not a mathematical computation, but, uh, be hard to argue against a four. Jamie, where do you end up on it overall? Well, I was four and a half across it. Um, I think I'm a four overall. Don't know how you get there, but that's where I'm at. I like that. You're keeping us kind of on our toes. That's good. <laughs> Everything I said about your non-mathematical but still had a result in a four is thrown out the window when Jamie gets his overall scores. I'm a four as well. Um, I was a little bit more varied on my on my uh, scores, kind of four and a half, four and a half, or four, four, uh, three and a half, but I still end up with a four on this. I think it's solid. Um, I'm pretty happy with this one. Uh, again, this is that $125. Jamie, I think you're right. Probably you're looking at more uh, 175 to 200 on an ordinary purchase of one of these. Uh, there's, there's a little bit of a flood out there on the market right now. Uh, that's going to dwindle up soon. I think it'll be back to that price, but let's assume this is 125 again, just like the last one. Where would you put value? Um, let's call this one. This one's definitely an uptake from the last one. Um, we're, we won't touch on the lead topic again, but let's call it three. I agree. Three. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with this one. I'm satisfied. Any other observations on the 76? Uh, no cinnamon at all. There's no real hot note to it that stuck out to me at all. And we still haven't mentioned vanilla on either one of these yet. So it's kind of interesting. Yeah. The, uh, cinnamon's definitely what one thing that wild Turkey is known for. Um, it, it's not hot. It's not cinnamon. It's not burning. Uh, and there's not a whole lot of, of high proof ethanol kind of burn to any of those so far. So, all right. 1977 stag junior bottle. Um, we're getting a little bit lighter in color than that 75, but not far off what the 76 was. This leaps out with um, much more of an herbal oh, note wow. than the other two did. Like this, this has a more characteristic rye grain kind of nose to it to me. I do get vanilla for the first time. You just mentioned that, Jamie. I do get vanilla for the first time and a little bit of toffee on this that I haven't gotten on any of the other bottles. Like a Basically vanilla chocolate's like a, like cocoa fudge. I get the cocoa, the fudge, the vanilla. There's um, there's a cigar note to it, but not like a real, not like a Cuban, like a like one that gets dumped out all the time. You mentioned uh, a tobacco flavor on that 76. I didn't really hit on it there, but I think it's worth noting now. Uh, if you've had like a really good, well aged cigar, and I'm not a cigar connoisseur by any means, but there's like there's a quality to an aged tobacco. Um, that only gets there with years and years. Um, and this doesn't have that aged tobacco note to it. I think you're right. It's more of a, a lower end. Fresh or sweet. Fresh, yeah, fresh cigar. There's some cherry fruit notes on this that I don't think I've been picking up on, on the others. A little bit of apple still.
Do you pick up a little bit of uh, like white pepper note for the first time on this? Is that just me? No, I see that. This does not have what I would typically associate with kind of a dusty profile to the nose. This feels more modern. I would not peg this one for 41 years old. It's not near as full as the last two in, in um, nose feel. Is that a thing, nose feel? Those characteristic... Um, you know, vintage noses that have the rich butterscotch leather. Um, this this doesn't quite have that to the degree that the other ones have, and and some of the older things that we've smelled before. At the same time, though, I I I, I still would describe this as rich on the nose. There's a lot there. I mean, listen to all the stuff that we've said. Yeah, a lot of times on these older bourbons, I'm I'm kind of describing them as butterscotch bombs, but the, the depth of flavor doesn't go much beyond that. And because the depth of flavor doesn't go much beyond that, I'm kind of left where it's really good, it's really rich, it's really enjoyable, but it's not something I'd want to go back to every day. This has a nice combination of richness and complexity. It may not be those uh, really punchy single flavors like a big butterscotch or something like that, but from an overall quality of a nose, this one really competes with the other two. Go back and nose your 76. It's so heavy and uh, it's not better. It's just heavy. I just took my first sip of the 77 and I'm hit by this strong one, two combo of this herbal and metallic uh, one, two punch here right at the forefront. There's still a, a, a sweetness to the palate that's either kind of a butterscotch or maple syrup, it, it's still really sweet. And after that, the sweetness doesn't last very long. It kind of burns off and, and even more than you're describing, even more of that kind of metallic one-two punch um, hits. There's almost a sharp sour note to it. Like when you... What are those little candies? Warheads? Like once the sour coating wears off enough where you're getting like the sugar hard candy shell underneath, um, but you still get some of that sour through that combination of the sweet and sour. I get a little, the, the finish to me is not quite as metallic as it is medicinal. Um, almost like a kind of a cough syrup, a coating kind of flavor there on the very tail end of the finish. There's other flavors on the palate. There's some salt. I'm getting some apple, maybe like a caramel apple kind of flavors on the on the palate. They're just kind of hidden back behind. Yeah, like the caramel apple lollipop thing. Like not actually a caramel apple, but like that little green sucker with the caramel coating around it. I get the salt, metal, and butterscotch, but not much more for me. I can I see like the apple. I feel like there's a rye grain note that's really strong on the finish. Yeah, this actually, um, really throughout, you know, one of the first things I said, like, 
at the very beginning when I noticed it was this has a rye theme all the way through. Um, a little bit of that rye uh, grain and, and and the herbal notes that you that you associate with a rye whiskey. Um, I I get some of that from the nose through the palate and then to the finish too. If so far with this one compared to the other two, if I were to peg one as possibly being from either a different distillery or or different mash bill or something. This 76 just does or 77 just doesn't seem to fit the profile of that 75, 76. Agreed. Yeah, I'd agree with that too. Um, I don't, am, I, am I the only one that, that that metal note seems to be building as we're going through this to where it's almost like you just can't taste what you <laughs> what you're wanting to taste? It sticks to your tongue. Yeah. No, it's it's there. Um I, f I feel like you can, once you recognize it's there and you kind of get, I don't know, you get acclimated to it a little bit, then I think you can start looking beyond it to find other flavors. But it, it, it's pretty it's pretty prevalent on the, on the tail end of this palate and, and finish. Let's, uh, let's kind of give it some scores if you've got some additional observations on nose palette finish, feel free to give them. Um, uh, Steven, start with you. I um, I felt like the nose on this for me was a three and a half. And then I was a three on the palette. And I think I'm a two and a half on the finish. Recognizing that this for me is one of those that's a little bit hard to digest because it's it's not the kind of flavors and, and scents that I typically would drift towards if I want a bourbon, um, and it's not like a well executed rye would be, um, and so uh, what I'm trying to say is that my score of three on the palate, my score of two and a half on the finish, are in full recognition of just really personal preference, and I could definitely see how someone might score them a little bit higher. But I think a three and a half on the nose, three palette, two and a half finish. Jamie? Go ahead. Um, I, I'm, I'm probably a three and a half on the nose, three and a half on the palette, and three on the finish. I, I think the finish is its lowest um, attribute. Uh, but I still find the, the nose and palate to be just a little bit more than, than satisfying. I um nose palette finish overall. I'm a two and a half. I am not liking this one. Um it's I, I part of it's I went into it expecting turkey, old dusty turkey, and I was drinking a thinking that it was dusty turkey, and it does not taste like any of the others that we've had so far in this. Uh, in our 30 days of turkey or any of the bottles that I've had myself. Uh, in comparison to those, it's a letdown to me. Uh, you can do what you want with that as far as scores go. J Jamie, did you get a chance to try the uh, the Christmas rye? I haven't tried it yet. I'm curious what, I know it's unrelated to this, but I'm, I'm curious what you'll think of that in light of this. Um, the Christmas rye is, is heads above better than this, um, but it does share some 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 of that herbal old rye herbal notes that are just pretty unique. There's not a whole lot of old ryes that at least I've had. I don't know about you, uh, but this it fits a little bit more of that into that profile. So I'll be curious what you think of that Christmas rye. Um, it sounds like we've got a little bit of, of, of variation here. Jamie, you're a two and a half overall. I'm probably a three overall. I think I was three and a half, three and a half, three, but I think my three overall. Steven, where do you end up on an overall? Overall, I'm a three, not a strong three, but um, I can't quite say it, it dips below a three. But where I, I do um, become a little bit more harsh, I guess you could say, um, I'm just 
I'm trying my best to be objective really is on the value on the value on this one. Um, I give the value on this one a two. Yeah, I, I, I can see that. Uh, 125, you've got a risk of lead. You've got a risk of buying a bottle that you can't see the juice in when you buy it. You know, Don't forget about that. You don't know if it's clear. You don't know if it's cloudy. You don't know how much is really in there. Um, and if you're expecting a quality like we just experienced, it would be a hard it would be hard to pull a trigger at 125 on this bottle especially if you knew that let's say you could pick one between the two that we've tried before this the 75 76 or the 77 and you're like well I can only pick one I'll pick the 77 you've committed to that and then you find out oh here's what the 75 tastes like here's what the 76 was like I don't see how you don't end up being a little bit disappointed <laughs> <laughs> that's great, uh, and that, that's a good point, uh, and, and that's why let's 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 touch on the on the note that if this was a regular eight one hundred one and not a decanter, um, and it was a seventy seven, that would be a five or six hundred dollar bottle. So let's let's put that into perspective for if somebody that wants to try a nineteen seventy six turkey. Um, for most of us, I'm not going to spend six hundred dollars on an eight one hundred one. So it, it does allow you to try it at least. Uh, but I, I'm in agreement in the score. So yeah, it's a little bit higher risk, but you're right. It's uh, there's some value built into these decanters just because of that known risk. Uh, so you know, arguably, they they do become uh, a you know a better use of the money you know, or maybe a little bit better gamble. Maybe that's a better way of describing it. Uh, 1978. Uh, we're now into the 1792 bottle. Um, again, color on this one is probably a little bit darker than the 77, but not as dark as the 76 and 75. We're back in butterscotch and leather land. I'm glad because I just poured the rest of my 77 just because mine were so much different. And I, it, I just find it thin and metallic and dusty and that's it. Yeah. The 78 returns to the profile we got with a 75 and 76 for sure. Even more leather, I think. I mean, that's a, yeah. that's a ton of leather on this. Getting into like some wood varnish maybe. There's some butterscotch notes there. Maybe a little bit of raisin. Would you maybe find some, is, is there maybe a little bit of molasses in that? Yeah, I, I can get that for sure. I think that's what I wanted to call that very first, the 70... Five, that molasses that's just so thick there's some of that like uh, so if you would have like a, a dry cereal that's supposed to be chocolatey like a chocolate puffs or like a chocolate bread there's that like uh, I wouldn't just describe it as dark chocolate or milk chocolate but it's like that chocolate cereal or chocolate yeah, like, bread kind of like kind of a smell. chocolate coffee creamer Yeah, I, I, I'm I'm kind of in that chocolate bready, chocolate muffin kind of uh, flavor. There's some rye notes to this, but it's not that big herbal uh, rye spice. It's just more of that rye grain. Yeah, the raw rye grain. There's more earthiness on this. It's actually even, um, it might be the, the grainiest of the four. I get a lot of grain, a lot of raw grain there, actually.
And I think you're right by calling it raw grain. It's not like a rye bread or anything like that. It's it's a handful of grain in your nose. I would say there's there's a little bit more corn on this nose than there has been on the others as well. The chocolate, I know that we, we're going to beat it to death here, but it's almost like the chocolate chocolate chip uh, bagels from Panera. Yeah. I don't think this has quite the the layers of flavor that some of these others, or maybe those seventy that maybe that seventy six had, but that chocolate and leather combination is really really good. I get some pie crust in there as well, maybe a hint of kind of apple pie, but like a. Sugared pie crust. The palate on this is terrific. Like a pecan pie on the nose. That palate is syrupy. Oh, yeah. This is my favorite palate so far. It really coats your mouth and it's a nice palate, yeah. Makes you want to take another drink, but not not right away. Yeah. <laughs> because it's a really long finish. It's got that flat cola where you really get the syrupiness of the of the cola, those sweet flavors mixed in with a touch of tobacco leaf, some oak and leather and then you come mixing in like the chocolate chips um maybe a little bit of fruit leather there on the the back end of the palate it is a it is a it's just a terrific taste uh a, a, a great combination the palate's very 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 nice you talk about flat cola and, and all those other flavors that you associate with that and then you kind of put in some oak flavors there's a sharpness to the oak that plays very nicely with sort of those other flatter, sweeter flavors that just really creates a very nice uh, mouth coating flavor profile. Um, it's a little bit oak. There's a little bit of cinnamon on that, on that a little bit of sharpness to the palate. Um, that it's a nice contrast there on the palate. You guys get the cherry on this one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like a hard cherry candy. Yeah, like a syrupy hard. Everything with this is syrupy. I get some overripe blackberries on the finish, like on the tail end of the finish for sure. Like, you know when you get a really good blackberry and it's got that sweetness mixed in with the tart uh, and, and it might not still be good if you try it just 12 hours later. That's where I'm at on the back end of the finish on this one. There's a nice oak backbone to the finish. Um, it feels a little bit sappy. Uh, I, I agree with that blackberry. Um, there's some baking spice there as well. A little bit of earthiness, leather, tobacco. It does have a really nice finish, and it it transitions nicely, but it doesn't mirror the palate. It's funny. We talked before we went on about what order to do these. You know, we just decided to go 75, 76, 77, and then 78, but we talked about maybe doing it in reverse order, 78, and then, you know, leading up with 75. Um, I I truly think, we'll score these in a second, but I truly think the 78 is giving us, at least on the palette and the finish, 
uh, the most solid experience, and it's probably good we ended up ending with that one. It's a crescendo, yeah. I don't paint this. I don't paint this as a as a five, but um, this is one. You know, it, it, it now ignore the lead issue. This is one I would I would have the same pour of multiple nights in a row just to really try to understand and appreciate everything that's going on in this one. This is really good on the palette and finish. Yeah. Mine, mine was gone a minute ago because this one is really, really good. Um, it, for Not that anybody on the web needs to know, but these bottles are being shared amongst Fight Club on Saturday. And my advice to Scott is let's put this one in the back room and let people drink the other three or maybe just 77. Let's just give them 77 <laughs> and uh, see, see what they think of it. You, you'll know where you fall on my uh, favorites list. Depends on which bottle I give you. <laughs> it, the significance of Saturday is I'm getting ready to celebrate my 40th birthday, born in 1978. So I mentioned earlier that I wanted a 70 wow. bottle. I'm, I'm very happy that the 78 has um, has presented itself so well, and that I wasn't born in '77. Uh, I'm. Uh, Someone else started out. I know my scores. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Steven, you want to start? I'm a four on the pa on the uh, nose, four on the nose, four and a half on the palate, four on the finish. I'm I'm close. I'm four, four and a half, four and a half. I'm with Jamie on this one. Um, we've had some heavy hitters lately on the palate finish. There are some better ones out there but they're not that much better. This is solid. This lacks any of the off-putting notes that we've talked about on some of the others. It's not a dry finish. It's not a metallic finish. It's not a medicinal finish. There's not that metallic note throughout. There's not a hint that this might have lead poisoning uh, in the flavor profile whatsoever. This is really solid. And, and although I think it could be bigger and bolder and better, uh, um, there's not a lot that I'd want to take out of what it has. So I'm, I'm with, I'm right there with Jamie four, four and a half, four and a half. Um, overall, Netherton. Yeah, I, I think I'm at a either four and a four and a half overall. Um, I think, I think I, I, I come back to a four, uh, just because I think a little bit of uniqueness might have pushed it up to a four and a half. Um, but more than satisfied easily. Jamie? Um, overall, this is a really good pour. Yeah, I, uh, I'd call, call it a four and a half. I'm going four and a half on this, and I'll throw one other observation out there. I would not believe this was 101 proof. There is no burn on this whatsoever. I mean, frankly, we've not talked about any burn, any red hot, any real hot cinnamon, any ethanol burn on any of these. But this one is just really good, and, and uh, there's just it's just really easy to drink. Oh yeah. Um, value again, same same scenario, one twenty five or so a bottle. Yeah, I'm at a four. Jamie? You think all the 1978s taste the same? Um, it's, I think there's still some out there. No, it's a, for, for value purposes, do you think they all taste the same? You know, there's, there's no guarantee on that. I suspect, as Turkey's always done, that these are heavily batched. Um, so I guess that if you find a similar decanter, it's it's going to be it's going to be the same depending on your storage conditions. Obviously, over that period of time, but it probably went in the same. Um, I think it would be worth the risk. Yeah, I I think this is a this is a four. If you're going to pick a seventy from of these four, then pick the seventy eight. It's it's good. I'm going to go up to a four and a half on value on this one. I I, I recognize the. 
the risk here on lead, I think that risk gets uh, lessened as you get older and older. Um, so I, I'm going to call the risk on a 78 less than the risk on a 75. But knowing some of these heavy hitters that we've tried lately that are two, three, four, five times the price of this, and we're giving this thing anywhere close to a four and a half on an overall score, I think this is a solid four and a half on value. Yeah, I wouldn't argue with you. Um, all right, we're through four. Um, do, um, do, do the ranks just fall in naturally with the scores, or do you think any of them stand out that should be reconsidered? I think we ended up with 78, 76, 75, 77 as an order. Does that sound about right? Yeah, I think you start out with 77 was the least favorite. Um and then 75 and 76, you know, they're, they're kind of neck and neck there in the middle. 78 was uh, the favorite. Well, all right. Well, I look forward to uh, sharing these with you all again uh, this coming Saturday. Uh, and the rest of the Flight Club guys, let them have a, a try of these and have them take some take, – take a few notes and see what they think overall and – and maybe chime in. And if, if any of you all out there who are watching this have, have tried some of these, have some notes you'd like to add, we'd really like to see your comments as well. Uh, any any parting thoughts? Uh, start with Jamie. Um, if you're looking for dusty turkey and you um, aren't wanting to spend a fortune, then take a gamble. Get yourself a decanter and drink it over the course of a couple of years. Um, that's... That's all I can say about the decanters, I guess. Steven? I'm just proud of you for waiting over an hour before mentioning uh, your birthday in conjunction with the significance of these decanters. So congratulations to you. Um, and I also think that these are not necessarily representative of, of dusty turkey. Um, it, it's, it's interesting to me how um, – each of these presented and um, what people associate with uh, older a wild turkey. Um, I think they they ought to know that some of these that weren't um, distilled uh, at a distillery that was called wild turkey um, are going to be a little bit different. They should be uh, ready for that. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they're they're going to be disappointed. They may not be at all, uh, but they are going to be a little bit different. Um, and so um, I'm glad I got to try it. Well, it's, it's typical flight club style that I'm not afraid to celebrate myself. Um, you know, that, that is sort of our motto, celebrating ourselves. So um, with that, I, I, I thank you two gentlemen for, uh, uh, for trying these with me and, uh, and helping out with the notes. We'll get a, we'll get a review, reviews of all these up. We won't post this video until all the different – uh, and, until November 30th, I suppose, when, when the last of these posts go up. But, but take a look at, uh, at the individual write-ups of each of these for our notes and observations. And I suppose thanks for watching. Thanks for joining, guys. Thank you. Yes.